It's time for the May refines and we have quite the hyped up bash, but can they live up to our crazy standards? Well, let's find out. First up, let's talk about one of our remixes and refines, Legendary Sigurd. Now, Legendary Sigurd was one of the units that literally broke the game at one point, so I have high expectations, but I don't think he lived quite up to them. So let's start off, he has slaying, so if his HP is going to go to 30%, or if he initiates combat, which is a nice little upgrade there, he gets plus 5 to all stats, he gets a guaranteed fall up attack, he gets 40% damage reduction against the first first attack, and that is brave, and then he heals 7 HP after combat. Then we look at his actual refine, he gets Kanto remaining plus 1, which is really big, and if his HP is greater than equal to 25%, he'll get an additional plus 4 to all stats. He'll get a bonus to all stats, which is the number of spaces moved by whoever initiates combat, so like a clash effect. Max of 4 though, and then he'll also deal damage equal to 15% of his attack, but does not work with AoEs. And then lastly, he gets a dull attack defense effect, essentially turning off the foe's bonuses to those two stats. Now let's move over and look at his actual remix. So we have Holy Knight Aura 2, and this is the same as it was before. At start of turn, Grant's unit can move one extra space, but now has a new effect where if you initiate combat, you also get 40% damage reduction against the foe's first attack, which is nice. You also get a boost special damage by 30% of your attack. And then after combat, once again like he used to, he will increase everybody's movement by 1, but he'll also give attack and defense plus 6 now, where before it was only attack, and he also gives out the damage reduction as a visible bonus, so nice little upgrade there. Okay, so overall, how well did Legendary Sigurd turn out? I'm going to be honest, uh, this is not great. This is a pretty bad refine. It didn't really give Sigurd the key things he needed. So he essentially needed three things to really succeed, and he got one out of the three. The one he got was Kanto remaining plus one, which is really nice because he is a four movement cav, right? So being able to like have an adjustable Kanto based off that high movement is really nice. The thing is, is that the problem that Sigurd really has is that like he needs to be able to charge his special because you really want the Holy Knight Ward to go off on the first hit. You don't want to give a chance for the opponent to kill you before it procs. And so because of that, um, he, he needed like a time pulse effect or a quicken pulse effect or something like that. Most ideally, he would have gotten a special jump effect so that he would always proc it before his first attack. That would have been amazing, but he did not get that. And then the other thing he really needed was like damage reduction piercing, right? Damage reduction piercing is very nice. Uh, the thing is, he doesn't have that and he can't run no quarter because he needs to run his preference special. So he really needed that either in the weapon or in the remix and he didn't get it in either one. So overall, we really have Sigurd and he doesn't really do what he needs to. He doesn't offer the very powerful support like he used to. Uh, he still has it, but there's just better options now. And then he also doesn't really have like a great way to like either kill things or like survive. Like if he had like a miracle effect, that would be kind of useful. Or like even anti-guard so he could like guarantee get the special off. But he doesn't have any of those things. And so I think T Sigurd's just like significantly better than this unit. One, he's a range unit. He might not have forward movement, which is actually a bonus in this way because he has the exact same threat range, but he doesn't he isn't weak to stall, so that's very, very good. And he also has a sweep effect as well, which makes him very safe to engage with. So like if you really need this effect, you either go for like T Sigurd or even like for uh, a green who can give it out to specific types of units. And so I think Legendary Sigurd just kind of falls off and doesn't really fulfill any of the roles he wants to as a support or a nuke or anything like that. So unfortunately, I think this is like probably one of the worst refines of this batch and definitely disappointing. Next, let's move on to Chris. With Spear of Shadow, this has slaying and then if the foe initiates combat or if the foe's HP equals greater than 75%, you get to neutralize all your penalties. You get to inflict minus five to attack speed and defense on the foe and you get full tempo, very nice. And then the refined SR of combat, if your HP is going to go 25%, you get plus four to all stats. You reduce damage from the foe's first attack by 40%, and this is brave. And you get tr true damage equal to 20% of your unit's speed during combat. And lastly, whenever you deal damage, you heal seven HP. Okay, so this refine isn't like anything insane, right? It's not like super complicated. The text is pretty small, uh, but there are some very nice effects here overall. You're essentially getting like plus nine to all stats, which is pretty solid. Penalty neutralization is actually a very good effect right now, considering how much uh, debuffs are being thrown around, but also things like uh, Discord and Sabotage as well, which really take advantage of those debuffs. So that's a very nice effect. Brave DR is also very solid. True damage allows her to like secure those kills very easily, and 7 HP per heal means that she can heal very consistently even without healing supports. And so while this isn't like anything insane, it's like not gonna make Chris into like some like meta Omni tank or anything like that, it's very solid and it actually gives her really good flexibility in her B slot. Because you don't really need anything like tempo or like uh, no follow up even because you can get that from an outsourced place. And so it lets your B slot be open for things like NCD4 or you could even go Lagoose Friend 4 if you wanted to, but 
It just makes her very flexible. So while this isn't like an amazing refine, I do think Chris did pretty well overall. And if you're a Chris fan, you can definitely make her work. Okay, let's move on to our other Omni tank of this batch. We have Sairi. So we have Slaying, we have SR of Combat for HP's greater than 25%. She can have Distant Counter. So this is a big upgrade before her Distant Counter used to be based off 50% HP, which was really bad. 25% uh, is a lot better, but it's still not perfect in my opinion, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Also, if her HP is greater than equal 25%, she'll get plus 4 all stats, and she'll get a flat damage reduction of 7 during combat against the foe's first attack, and that is brave. So that's very nice as well. Then if the foe initiates combat or the foe's HP is greater than equal 75%, she'll get another plus 4 all stats. She'll get 40% damage reduction, that is brave as well, against the foe's first attack. She'll get special acceleration, and she heals 7 HP after combat. So this is kind of in the same vein as Chris in my opinion. They're very similar, but um, just more flexible in different ways. Sairi has a much more flexible open A slot because she doesn't run either run distant counter. So she can run stuff like finish or like the speed boost skills. So she can have garden HP, which is nice. But she also like has a less flexible B slot because of that. So it's kind of a trade off between the two of them. She does have special acceleration as well, which means that she doesn't need to run anything like pledge. And she can very easily cycle stuff in like um, got like reflexes, which is nice too. You just get a bit of healing, not enough to really sustain herself completely, as it is only one heal after combat, but it definitely does help. So once again, like Chris, I do think Sairi got a nice overall refine, definitely usable, not anything meta-defining. She's definitely not going to be up there with your Emblem Ikes or your Leers or Altina or Korn or anything like that, but it's definitely usable. And if you are a Sairi fan, you can definitely make it work with a bit of investment. Okay, let's move on to my girl, Patrine. And uh, this is one of the refines I was definitely looking forward to in this batch. And so we have Flame Lance, so as effective as a Beast Foe, so you get speed plus 3. And that start of combat, if her HP is greater than equal to 25%, she'll calculate damage using the foe's resistance. And she'll inflict attack minus 4, speed and resistance minus 5 on the foe during combat. And she gets herself full no follow. And then if she initiates combat, or if the number of allies adjacent to her is less than or equal to 1, she'll get another minus 4 all stats on the foe. She'll inflict a penalty on the foe's attack, speed and resistance equal to the number of current bonuses on each of those foe stats times 2. So this is like kind of like a bonus or reversal effect essentially. So if they like plus 7 to a stat, essentially just like flopping around to like minus 11, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then she also gets like an ice mirror effect where she will reduce damage from the first attack by 30% and then she'll kind of bounce that back at them. Uh, unfortunately, because I was really looking forward to this refine, I have this unit at plus 10, I don't think this is very much. Uh, we're in a very, very competitive meta when it comes to cav melee units. You need to be really, really good to like really succeed. And I don't think Patrine got nearly enough to make her do that. Uh, effective against beast is cool, but honestly, beasts aren't like the most prominent thing in the meta. You definitely can get use of it, but it's not like a game changer. Uh, being able to target the foe's resistance is also very nice. She gets a decent amount of stats and no follow up is pretty solid on calves because they don't have like the easiest access to it. But there are ways to get it for sure. The Ice Mirror effect also adds a nice little bit of chunk of damage, which is very nice. But I'm going to be honest, the foe bonus like reversal effect where you essentially like, reverse their bonuses on them isn't all that reliable. It can be very good in situations when like the opponent is like stacking bonuses and they're like have bonus double and stuff like that. Uh, but it's just, it's very much conditioned off the opponent doing something. And so if the opponent doesn't do it, she loses a lot of her power. Not only that, she doesn't have slang, which means it's kind of difficult for her to use no quarter because as a, uh, a cav, lens cav, she doesn't have access to like good special acceleration. Like she only has like really heavy blade, which is not great, right? Like she doesn't have access to flash sparrow as a cav, which really sucks. Uh, even with the Marth ring, you're still looking at like trying to have like a two cooldown no quarter, which means if they have like guard, then like you can get blocked out of it, or you like rely on the foe counterattacking you to get it activated, which isn't very reliable as well. And so overall, I just think Patrine did not get that great of a refine, unfortunately. It's definitely usable, like you can make it work, but you're gonna have to put in a lot of fodder here. And even then, she's not gonna be as good as like the top tier calves uh, in the current meta. Okay, let's move on to our other Tellius character. We got Summer Mia with Summer Strikers. So this has Slaying, and if she initiates combat or if the foe is ranged, she grants attack and speed plus five to herself. She reduces damage from the foe's first attack by 75%, and it is brave now, which is very notable because she was very weak to brave attacks before. Essentially, she would take like no damage and then she would just get exploded. So very nice upgrade there. She'll also neutralize effects that inflict guard on herself. So she gets the anti-guard effect, which is nice. Um, and then at start of turn for herself and allies within two spaces, if their special cooldown count is at max, she grants special cooldown count minus one to herself and those units. So essentially she has like a drive time pulse, which is really, really, really cool, especially on a cav unit. So that's very cool. 
Um, and then at start of combat, for HP scanner 25%, she'll get another attack and speed plus 5 during combat. She'll get a bonus to her attack and speed equal to 20% of her speed at start of combat, like the visible speed. And she'll neutralize uh, get effects that guarantee plus follow-up attacks and effects that prevent her follow-up attacks, so she has no follow-up. Um, so this refine is really interesting. I definitely think that she got some of the things she really wanted. Um, she definitely wanted a way to get a ton of attack and speed, which she did get, which is very nice. She got anti-guard, which is really solid. It can allow her to like use two cooldown specials very effectively, or even three cooldown specials if the folk counter attacks. She got uh, a better version of her damage reduction, which is like one of her main selling points. And even null fault is very nice as well. Uh, the times pulse is really the thing that stands out though. It's the effect that would make Mia worth using, as she could be used in like something like a summoner duels team with like alongside a pathfinder setup. And because she can grant cooldown to everyone, she gets to be a calf, but at the same time kind of run the role that Asker does, allowing other units to run AoEs or like high cooldown specials. Now the thing is for me is like I don't think Mia does enough damage. That's like the big thing with her. She doesn't have like any type of true damage or like any type of like way to like easily get lethality off. Even with the times post, it's only gonna be a two cooldown lethality. And as I just mentioned with Patrine, they don't really have an easy way to get special acceleration. So lethality is definitely possible, but you're gonna need somebody else supporting you as well. And so the question becomes, is Mia good enough to replace one of your other meta calves in those teams? And I'm not honestly completely sure. I definitely think it's possible, but it's gonna take a lot of investment and a lot of work. And you're probably gonna be relying more on like Flared Sparrow and Assassin's Strike to do a lot of the damage and less of her actual weapon. So I do think Sarmia overall did get a pretty solid refine. And I don't think it puts her on the same stage as current nukes. Okay, let's move on to the refine I was most anticipating. One of my favorite units in the entire game, Fallen Leon. Oh man, was I hyped for this refine. Let's get into it. So we have Blood Tome, this grants attack plus 3, and as the foe is range, you reduce damage from AoEs by 80%. If the unit initiates combat or if the foe is range, you get attack plus 5 to yourself and you inflict attack minus 5 on the foe. You deal damage equal to 20% of your resistance, and you reduce damage from the foe's attacks by 50%. And then if the unit initiates combat or the foe is range, and if the foe is colorless, you get weapon triangle advantage, and you inflict weapon triangle disadvantage on them. So, a little bit of an upgrade from the existing weapon, getting some nice little chunk of stats there, a nice daunt effect, and you're also getting true damage, which is very big as Leon did sometimes struggle to kill, uh, but this will definitely help him out. Uh, we then go on to the actual refine, and this is where it gets a bit rough. So we've at start of turn grants cancel affinity to unit. At start of turn, inflicts attack and res minus 7 and triangle duck on closest foes within 5 spaces of unit and any foes within 2 spaces of those foes. And then at start of combat, if your HP is greater than 25%, you'll get another attack plus 5 and inflict another attack minus 5 on the foe. You can guarantee fall attack and you get guard. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone told intelligence systems, but the weapon triangle advantage uh, hasn't really been a thing for like two years at least, if not more. And so the fact that they actually brought out Cancel of Finny and Triangle Adept in 2024 is hilarious, enraging, and sad. And so I just don't see why they would do this. It really doesn't help Leon all that much. Sometimes it's actually gonna work negatively against like his like allies and stuff, right? Because he's gonna be uh, giving them triangle adept and they don't have cancel affinity, only he does. So like that's already a big negative. The attack in res minus seven is very nice. I just wish it wasn't like triangle adept. I wish it was like sabotage or discord or like panic or anything actually useful. So very, very disappointing with that part of the refine. Uh, but when you remove that part and you don't look at it, the rest of the refine is pretty solid. Uh, you get a very nice chunk of stats. You're effectively getting attack plus 10 and you're inflicting attack minus 10 on the foe, which is a pretty big daunt effect. Uh, you're also getting a nice chunk of true damage, which means that he will have an easier time securing kills. And you are getting a guaranteed fall attack, which is one of the biggest things he needed. Uh, back in the day, you had to run like quick repose seal, which was a big downside with him. Uh, but now it's built into his weapon. You also get guard, which is one of the other effects he really, really needed. Um, so the thing is, like, how good is this refine? It's good, but it's not amazing. I think if they were to chunk, cut out that middle part of the refine and just made it so it was like almost anything else, it would have been way better. Uh, the one effect I really wanted on him was anti-guard, and the reason why is because anti-guard allows him to run a Lagoo's friend flare build. 
And the thing is, is that a lot of the ranged uh, tanks right now cannot run Flare because they have slaying. And so the fact that he didn't have slaying was actually a bonus because it made it so that Flare was a three cooldown special. And so if you had anti-guard on Leon, he would get hit. Lagoose friend would charge his Flare and then he would retaliate with Flare, either doing massive damage or healing a ton of HP, which would be really good. And so uh, not having anti-guard is a little bit rough as he is weak to guard now, but even so you can still run that build. And I think that will be the optimal build in most situations, even though it does cut his DR a little bit. And so I do think uh, overall Leon will be very usable. He's still going to be very good, but you're going to need to hyper invest into him. You're going to want Lagoo's friend. You're going to want like some very premium skills on him, which isn't the easiest things to get currently. <laughs> It'll be a little bit easier at the end of the month, but still. Um, so I, I think this refine is good, but not great, and I'm, I'm, I'm sad that we didn't get a little bit more. I would have really loved to be able to put flat DR in his weapon uh, alongside that true damage. That would have been amazing, but unfortunately they didn't. So, so let's move on to the final unit of this refine batch. Okay, here he is, Legendary Byleth, the one everyone's been waiting for. If your professor of text, this has slang, and if you need to initiate its combat, or if there's an ally within three rows or three columns centered on Byleth, you grant plus five to all stats to yourself, you get seven true damage during combat, but not with AoEs. And then also if your speed's greater than the foe speed, you get full no follow. We also have a new effect added where allies within three rows of three columns centered on him gain speed based no follow up and attack and speed plus five. So this is a massive upgrade. I love this so much because the problem with Byleth originally was that it was only a drive. And so you always had to have Byleth within two spaces of your Omni tank. And a lot of times you didn't want that. You wanted to run somebody else there. There was just so many other units that were more valuable than Byleth as a support. And now that Byleth can stand really far back and grant that no follow up, but also the attack is plus five is big, very, very big. So nice upgrade there. We then look at the actual refine and we have, if you use HP scaring to go to percent you'll get additional plus four to all stats during combat. You also get a bonus to your attack, speed, defense, and resistance equal to the number of allies within three row columns or three rows centered on Byleth uncapped so that could typically be like two or three stats which is pretty nice uh, you'll also neutralize your own penalties to attack and speed you get a full tempo effect which is really nice and then lastly you reduce damage from the foe's first attack by 30 percent break but there's one other thing he actually gets another layer of support that's right he neutralizes the penalties to attack and speed on allies within three rows or three columns centered on unit turn your comment now before we talk about this entire fine let's look at his remix really quickly so we have Sublime Heaven 2 at start of turn. If you get special cooldown count is at maximum value, you get special cooldown count minus one. You also get a booster damage by 30% of your attack. And if they're a beast or dragon, it becomes 60% instead. Okay, so Sublime Heaven 2, I'm honestly not that big of a fan of. Uh, Time's Pulse is a nice effect, but honestly, because Hardy Fighter exists, a lot of times you don't want your special pre-charge because it just goes into Hardy Fighter, it doesn't do much, and then your next hit doesn't do nearly much damage. So honestly, not too big on Sublime Heaven 2, but the actual refine is quite good in my opinion. It's not meta breaking or anything, but it definitely makes Bile a lot better and it makes his support a lot more valuable. He definitely got a little bit more stats and a little bit more true damage, which does help his nuking, but honestly won't put him at the same level as like the most meta nukes currently. But when it comes to support, he does have some really nice stuff. Being able to just give him the fall up to anyone is really good, especially when it's in that big of a range. It essentially allows him to like just chill in the back while offering up stats, also neutralizing the unit's attack and speed penalties, which is very relevant right now because there's this debuffs being thrown everywhere, sabotage and discord and stuff like that. So being able to just completely neutralize those stats is really, really good. And so overall, I think Legendary Male Violet become a very good uh, support unit for like Omni tanks or for units who need attack and speed and they'll follow up, right? So he's not going to be really good with units like, let's say, Emblem Ike or like Altina or something like that, but he will work really well with units like Legendary Male Lear or like Sheeta or something like that, right? Uh, he's going to be able to be able to offer the things that they really want from him, and he's going to be able to do it from a safe distance, which means that you can have a different support within two spaces of that Omni tank. So overall, I think this is like a very solid refine, and I'm glad that Legendary Bioth got some love. Okay, who won the Refine War of May? So at the top, I'm going to have Byleth and A. I think a Byleth definitely got a solid refine. Nothing meta changing or meta warping by any means. And he's not going to become like one of the best support users in the game, but he definitely got a lot better, so I'm going to put him in A. We're going to put Mia in B. I think Mia definitely got some nice effects, which make her a little bit unique, but I don't know if the rest of her kit does enough to make her worth running. Uh, we're also going to have Fallen Leon in B. Once again, just solid refine. It helps him out, but doesn't give him quite enough. We have Chris and Sairi there as well, also in the same boat. Definitely usable, definitely has some power there, but I wish they would have gotten a bit more as they really do have some stiff competition in the current Omni tanks. 
and then down in C, which is gonna just hurt me so much, we have Legendary, Sacred, and Patrine. These were two of the units I was most hyped for, and seeing them this far down really hurts, but I just think that the refines did not do nearly enough for them. Um, there's just better alternatives to Sigurd now by like a large margin, and Patrine's in a very, very like competitive role, and she just does not compare to a lot of the other units currently. But now I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of this refine batch? Which refines do you like the most? Which units are you planning on refining? And what kind of builds are you planning on running? I always find that the most interesting part, so make sure to drop a comment down below letting me know all the interesting builds you have planned out. As always, I'd like to thank all my members for their constant support. This has been Oblivion. I'll catch you all later with more Fabian Heroes.